Folks, let's talk about the story out of Louisiana. We've been discussing this for quite some time, uh, and that is the case of Ronald Green, the black man uh, who died at the hands of police. A massive cover up. Uh, the Louisiana state troopers uh, have been lying left and right about exactly what took place uh, in that particular case. This week, uh, the uh, governor uh, actually um, announced that he was made aware of Ronald Green's death several hours after it happened, but he never talked about that on the campaign trail. Huh. Why is that? Uh, joining us right now is the mother of Ronald Green, uh, Mona Harton. She's out of Florida. And uh, also, Carl Cavalier. He is the whistleblower uh, from Huma, Louisiana. Uh, and we're going to hear about his case. And remember, uh, they were trying to get him fired uh, because he blew the whistle of misconduct. First, I want to start with you, Mona. Um, there was a meeting yesterday. We were supposed to have you on yesterday, but y'all were in, in meetings taking place with the governor and others. And so what was the outcome? What was discussed in that meeting? The meeting that you're talking about from the governor? Yes, or? yeah, yeah. In terms of the meetings that y'all were involved in on yesterday. Uh, the day before. Sorry, day before. Was the governor. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, as far as that goes, that was... That was nothing but something for him to stick his head up and just it was it was fake. It was it was it was so fraudulent. The fact that he said that there he there was no part, he took no part of of uh, what happened to my son at the very beginning. And it wasn't until we pushed buttons that he started rearing his head up. And the fact that he did how he did uh, almost three years later it's just it's just to save his own neck it doesn't matter who he throws under the bus at this point did he give you any indication uh that he is going to be more aggressive in demanding answers from louisiana not, state police i'm sorry to interrupt i've not spoke to anyone uh and uh as far as being other than the fact that they've been in investigation. That's all we've been told from the very beginning. Uh, and uh, even at the very beginning, we weren't told anything, anything. Uh, and uh, if it wasn't for the fact that we have so many people behind the scenes that are willing to speak up, they're tired of what's going on, uh, this wouldn't be made possible, I can't think, for all those that's been involved in this because this needs to stop. This organized crime within the state of Louisiana this has been going on for too long. And the sad part is uh, it's, it's not just my son, it's many more. You use the right phrase there, organized crime in this state. Uh, Carl, I want to bring you in. You blew the whistle on what was taking place. Um, what has now been the outcome of the case, in your case? Well, in my case, uh, first of all, I think you can tell from Ms. Mona's response um, how political this thing has become and how political it's been from the start for me, from my understanding. Um, from my standpoint, the governor was forced. That, that response that the governor gave was forced. It was forced on behalf of the Black Caucus. And um, that's not to say to pat the Black Caucus on their back, because my opinion is that uh, this case got caught up into a political role win and it's still caught up in a political role win on the uh, end of the Black Caucus and the end of the governor because um, throughout last year you could see the black members of the Black Caucus on a golf course with the governor the whole time Ms. Mona, myself and other people uh, part of this case was screaming, you know, hey, there's a cover up, there's a cover up, uh, putting evidence out in the news, there's a cover up, there's a cover up. All of a sudden now at this point everyone is um, you know, seem to be more involved now, seem to, to want to speak up and speak out about something now because of these text messages come forward about the governor. My thing is this, if um, I don't understand why some members of the Black Caucus were so quick to jump out in front, you know, of the governor, to the governor of defense and saying that, hey, you know, we need more evidence. We can't jump jump the gun on this. We, we need more evidence. Um, that just screamed politics to me. And I understand, you know, politics are, are necessary uh, as far as, uh, you know, 
elections coming and then, you know, the redistricting and gerrymandering. I get all that. But a, a man died at the end of the day. But to answer your question, um, what's going on with my situation is that I'm, I filed an appeal. So I have to go through the process of uh, trying to get my job back, uh, trying to seek, you know, um, just uh, just 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 some type of. Um, I don't know, uh, reparations for, for, for what they've done to me. So uh, that's where I'm at with that. So, you, so you've been officially fired by the Louisiana State Troopers? That's correct. And, that's you're, correct. and you're filing the appeal to get your job back? That's correct. See, that's the thing there, uh, Mona. I mean, the reality is, uh, had Carl not come forward and blown the whistle, uh, we, wouldn't, we, we wouldn't be here. They, they lied in terms of how your son died. They tried to cover it up. They tried to destroy evidence. And you know what? A big salute to everyone, Carl, all the others. The list goes on and on. And I'm sure if retaliating and uh, the intimidation, the intimidation was rough for me. I could imagine how it is for fellows like Carl and all the others that have to work and walk amongst these crooks. How scary could that be? How evil to be among them? And the fact that they get away with so much uh, undercover stuff, uh, and they get away with it, to for these whistleblowers to take that step forward, uh, that's that's the bravest that I can even I can't even imagine to live amongst that. But yet, and still, they still do it, and it's because of these few that do. If they would correct all that needs to be corrected. As far as fixing, uh, gutting up this evil organization from the top down and back up to the top, that's a start. Because there's a lot of people who would come forward. I have no doubt about that. They shouldn't have to be treated so. Because in the end, these are state paid employees. They're, they're state paid. They get state paid through taxpayers' dollars. But the killings, is that state condoned because there's so many. Carl, uh, again, you have been uh, quite outspoken. I'm sure you've talked privately with other law enforcement uh, officers, whether they black or white. Uh, are they just simply too afraid uh, of saying something because they don't want to happen to them? What happened to you? Uh, that's exactly true. And uh, the fact that state police knows that and they understand that uh, the the last time I was on your show, I was just telling you that, you know, I don't know what's going to happen next, but I know state police is going to try to dirty my name and discredit me as, as much as they can. Well, um, they're doing a poor job at it, but they still had the authority. They still had the position to uh, to fire me because they can, you know, they can do it if they want to. It's not right, but they can do it if they want. And um, I believe I'll get my job back on the, on the back end. I'll, I'll win everything on the back end. But their whole goal is to make an example out of me make an example out of me so they wouldn't have anyone coming behind me to speak up and speak out about what's going on. Because I, I say all the time, what I'm doing should be a trend. It should be easy for officers to speak up and speak out, you know, but uh, it's, it's not like that. I think I think it's going to get like that in the future. I think uh, we'll run into some different times here, here in the future, especially um, if we could continue getting the support from the public like I've been receiving from, you know, random people around the country and uh, different countries as well. Um, but I, I think we'll get back to we'll get to a better place where you have more officers like myself speaking out. But right now, there's people speaking to me behind the scenes because they they don't want that pressure for their family and they don't want to lose that paycheck that they have. You know, uh, Mona, what do you want folks to do next? You know, what is next uh, in uh, this case? You know, it's sad to say, but for the fact that the state of Louisiana, they're they're gathering around. This governor, this 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 beloved governor, they gather around him. It's almost to where they, when they say they saw the video of my son being tortured, murdered by their troopers, it's like they might have been looking at it with fingers in their ears and their eyes closed. Because if they saw it, the way it was for all to see, it's no way. It's no way that they could move forward. I mean, I understand it's, it's political. 
it's it's evil it's nasty it's but the thing is the fact that all these 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 political figures uh, in the almost three years I've seen those and it's very few uh, that that have stepped forward and I've seen those that have no integrity whatsoever and the fact that they'll still rally behind Edwards and support him and even as well as uh, yesterday uh, and the day before, uh, step forward and continue to lie. It's, uh, but it's, it's not a lie that will go far because I'm not going to let it. Mona Harden, call Cavalier. I appreciate both of you joining us on Roller Martin Unfiltered. I thank, thank you. Roller Martin Unfiltered video in just one moment. to be smart. Roland Martin's doing this every day. Oh, no punches! Thank you, Roland Martin, for always giving voice to the issues. Look for Roland Martin in the whirlwind, to quote Marcus Garvey again. The video looks phenomenal, so I'm really excited to see it on my big screen. I support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. See, this is the difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. I got to defer to the brilliance of Dr. Carr and to the brilliance of the Black Star Network. I am rolling with rolling all the way. Honored to be on a show that you own. A Black man <laughs> owns the show. Folks, Black Star Network is here. I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. Wow. Rolling was amazing on that. Hey, Black, I love y'all. I can't commend you enough about this platform that you've created for us to be able to share who we are, what we're doing in the world, and the impact that we're having. Let's be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You can't be black on media and be scared. You dig?